Hey, hey, and welcome back to our 10th video in the Learning Java 2D Programming series. For today's video, we are going to introduce a class which will keep track of our current frame. So I will call this class an Animation Manager. And for now, all of my moving units will have it. And we might move it later depending on how we structure our entities. But for now, our moving units will have an animation manager. All right, so let's get to it. So first, I'm going to put it in the graphics package. Make the new class that at least I will call an animation manager. Right, and so this is going to need quite a lot of things, but you'll see and I'll explain as we go. So first of all, it needs a sprite set. So this is the equivalent of one unit and all of its animations. So I've named my units Dave and Matt. So this is either Dave or Matt currently and all of the animations that he has. So I'm going to want to store a buffered image of the current animation sheet. And let's see, let's see, I need to be on it to import it. And you will see why. We also need to keep track of some timing variables. So I'm going to want an int that is current frame time. I'm going to want an int called updates per frame. And I'm going to want one called frame index. So just to uh, explain what these will be, updates per frame. Maybe we can actually do this since these two kind of uh, belong together. So updates per frame is for how many updates we want one frame to live with within an animation. And we're keeping it simple. So we're going to have the same um, amount of updates for every frame in every animation. This might be something that you would want to declare per animation maybe. In that case, you'd probably have to do it in some config file on disk which you load in. But keeping it simple for now, I feel like that's the best way to go. So all of our animations, uh, all the frames are always going to live for exactly the same amount of time. So and that's this time. So we will tick this up for every update. We will increment this variable. And when it reaches the life of a frame, we're going to switch frames. And this index will keep track of which frame we're on. So now for the construct constructor. Let's make the animation manager constructor. It will take in a sprite set. All right, so this sprite set is equal to sprite set. And now let's do some updates per frame. I'm going to set it to 20 for now. We'll see what that looks like and we might change it later. So frame index is zero and current frame time is also zero when we initialize it. And so you don't have to set these to zero since these are um, primitives they will be zero by default. But I feel like just to be very clear and say that this is this is what I want. So um, it's better to be declarative. Is that what you say? I don't know. So this class is going to need some more things. It will need a get sprite. So that will just return the current sprite we're on. So all the logic for figuring out where we are, what sprite to send, all of that will live inside of this class and it will just send us the right image, which, which will pass along from our moving entity. So what we need is our current animation sheet, get sub image. And if you remember what it looked like, maybe I can bring it up. Let's just take Dave, let's just take the stand. Um, here are different directions. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So these are the frames inside of the animation and these are the different directions. So we're not going to do the directions today. We're going to do that next video because that will take a little bit more. Um, but we are going to do the animation. 
So for the x-axis, that is this way, we are going to find at whatever frame index we're at, and then we need to know how big each of these frames are. And I have decided that for my game, uh, one sprite will be 64 by 64 pixels. So to make it easy for me, I'm going to go to my game class. Sorry, there we are, game class. And I'm actually going to make a static variable called sprite size. And this is just to keep it simple, since I've already decided that it's all going to be 64. Um, there's no need to have this variable any other way. So this is a constant. This won't change. If this would change, I would have to redo all of my graphics. Um, I've already decided this. So this will be easy because we have it in one place. So the frame index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, times however big of a size we have, which will now be size. Okay, and for the y, uh, we're going to do directions next time. So let's just start with 0. That is up here. And then we need a width, which is sprite size, and a height, which is also sprite size. Yeah. So, all right, I already had it down here. So this is it for the get sprite. There are still a couple more things we need to do. So we need the update uh, function. So let's make that update. First, we tick up the current frame time, and then we check. If the current frame time is larger than or equal to the amount of updates that we want it to live, that means it's time to change our frame. So that means the current frame time will be zero after this, and let's just increment our frame index. But now we need to know if our frame index is at the end of how many frames our animation has. And to know that, we get the current animation sheet, and we say get width, and then we need to divide it by the sprite size. And also we need to take minus one because of because of indexes, you know. So sorry, if this is true then we need to restart our animation. So just set the index back to zero. All right, so that will just replay the animation again and again. <laughs> and then there's one more thing that we need. We need a play animation um, method. We'll take in the name of the animation that we want to play. And for later, we will probably make this a bit smarter. So if it cannot find the animation that we want, it won't crash. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. So we're just going to assume that the name that comes in is a correct name. Um, so let's just say that this current animation sheet is equal to sprite set get name and so this returns just an image so we need to cast it to a buffered image and the reason I'm uh, saving it as a buffered image is because the buffered image has the get sub image method on it all right so I think that's it for our simple animation manager so let's do some stuff with our entity so we can try it out. The first thing we want to do is move this get sprite. So let's just cut that out. And now it's sad because the moving entity does not implement the get sprite method. And we say in game object, object that it has to. So we don't want any of this anymore. We now instead want an animation manager here. We need to new animation manager. And so what this needs is a sprite set. 
So how will we know? We can't know unless we have the sprite library. And so the sprite library will be loaded in inside here. We have it in our game object. So we can just say in our moving entity, let's take in the sprite library when we initialize our object, but we won't save it because we only need it to figure out um, what sprite set we're going to use. So for that, let's say sprite library get, and I'm going to say get unit, and then I'm going to just pass a name for now. So let's pass Dave, because we know that's one that we have, and we need to make this method. So just um, alt enter to generate and string and just say name here. So we want to do, uh, let's see, we have units, right? Units get key name. That should be it. Okay, so now we have an animation manager. We say get unit Dave. We'll need to update our animation manager. So update. This will make the animations actually animate. We need to get the sprite. So we say animation manager get sprites. And we, of course, we need to return as well. So return animation manager get sprite. All right, so now that's happy. However, we call the super constructor from our player. So now our player is also going to need the sprite library. Library. Sprite library. And then pass it along. Sprite library. All right. So stuff that we can get rid of from in here. And so now this one's sad because now it's expecting a sprite library, so just give it the sprite library. All right. I wonder if this is it. Let's just try it and see what happens. All right, so did I not do this correctly? Required input found. OK, so this, oh, sorry, I put it inside of the player controller. My mistake. There we go. Now let's try to press play. And we are getting a null pointer exception. It's the animation manager, which says that current animation sheets. Right, so what we can do is let's just say play animation and give it stand because we know we have stand. There we go. Look at that. We now have our animation manager and we have our little guy on the screen. He is currently playing our our stand animation and he's only look facing downwards. And we will fix that. We'll fix the both the walk animation and the direction in the next video. But the bulk of the work is done. So the other things are just calculating which animation it should play when and which Y index it should have. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, Doa.